What's up, guys? It's good to be back. Um, I see a lot of you in the chat, which is great. And as I am looking in the chat, I'm realizing there might have been a little bit of clashing going on between uh, the music that I had selected to play and the fact that perhaps there was some music embedded in the uh, pre-video that I was not aware of. So I apologize to any of you <laughs> that were just subject to that really, really, really weird mashup. Um, anyhow, thanks everyone for being here and tuning in. I want to quickly address maybe some of the concerns that were, uh, being laid out here in the chat. This is not going to replace my normal show right now. 343 TV is just on a bit of a hiatus, uh, what you might call a hibernation period, a gestation period. We're just, um, gearing up for our new season, which is going to be starting in September full blast again. Um, just taking the summer off, taking it easy, you know, but, um, what we're doing is, is a couple of kind of community oriented based events, um, you know, and little special one-off types of things. So today and two weeks from today, I'm going to be doing feedback sessions on your guys' tracks. And so if you want my critical feedback and, and my input on your productions, your mixes, anything, you know, really, you can submit your work. The only requirement is that it's something that you think is done or is almost done, right? We don't want like half ideas. Um, we really want we want things that sound like they're almost finished. Um, and so, yeah, what, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm just going to jump through some of your submissions. Um, and I'm going to give live feedback on air. Now, I, I don't want to scare any of you. I was, excuse me, I was realizing due to the kind of like the name of the show, maybe you thought track review meant I'm going to give you a scale of like one to five, how good your song is. That's not what's going to be happening at all. Um, so what I'm just going to be doing is, is, you know, trying to give you critical feedback on, let me just adjust my mic here. Critical feedback on your production, uh, on some of the songwriting, on any mix work, stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to be giving qualitative feedback on your music as a whole. I'm going to be giving simply, you know, kind of constructive criticism about how your track could maybe sound better, things like that, you know, or function better. Um, and anyhow, yeah. So also welcome to my new apartment. This is my new space, which I'll be streaming from. Feels way more open. I'm really excited about it. Um, and yeah, without any further ado, although I guess real quick well, on the off chance that some of you are joining us for the very first time, explain what it is that you've just walked into. So this is 343 TV and it is the online educational, free educational branch of the music school 343 labs. And we are a music school based in New York city, Berlin and online. And we offer classes in Ableton, Logic, Mixing, and Mastering, Synthesis, Sound Design, Composition and Arrangement, Vocal Production, Music Theory, you name it, we teach it. Um, and so, you know, if you're interested in learning more about the courses we have to offer, go to 343labs.com. And if you find the content cool on the channel, I would encourage you to hit the subscribe button. We have an ever-increasing community and ecosystem of talented producers at very many different levels and um, I would highly encourage you to become a part of that and get involved and also to submit one of your tracks so I can listen to it and tell you how bad it is I'm just kidding anyway let's jump into it so there have been a couple of last minute submissions now I don't know if you guys read the uh, kind of the guidelines here oh wow a bunch of you guys dropped in a few so the guidelines here are pretty simple and essentially, um, you simply have to be in the chat um, when we when I when I play your song in order to get feedback. So I recognize some of these names, and I'm really happy about that because some of you are people that I've taught in the past. Some of them are people's names that I recognize simply from being uh, in the chat a lot, which is also dope because I'm really happy to have you guys interacting and engaging. Um, but I will ask just real quick if I pull up um, if I pull up your your track, I'll just ask that you guys um, quickly 
like identify yourself uh, as the owner, <laughs> the creator of that track. Uh, so I'm going to start with this track from um, Eat Your Cereal, which is funny. Um, so I believe it's Punked Deform is the name of the uh, YouTube account that it's coming from. So if you could just real quick lob a little hello into the chat so I know that you're there, um, then we can go ahead and get started with the feedback session. So I'm just going to wait for um, whoever's track it is to identify themselves. And then we'll go ahead and get started. Actually, you know what? To speed up this process, um, if you're here and you submitted a track, just go ahead and give me a little hand wave and say the name of your track. So, cause we are on a bit of a delay where what I say is coming through to you guys, like, you know, 30 seconds to a minute later. Um, so I think it'll just make everyone's life a little bit easier if we do that. By the way, um, punk, punk deform, you already got some serious love from Jenna. So, uh, that's good. Yeah, eat your cereal. Where are you? All right. Well, until you show up, I see Drunk Bishop and I see Spooks. So we're going to go ahead and just get started with Spooks. That'll be the first one that we go over. All right, guys. So let's get ready to rumble. And my internet works. That was very, very anticlimactic. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, what's going on? Um, internet. Let's try this. Okay, let's see if this is a me problem or a you problem. This is a me problem. Okay. Um, let's see if it's a SoundCloud problem. All right, well, it seems like my internet is being the coolest. <sighs> um... Try this again. I'm going to be patient for a second. All right. Good to know, Spooks. Um, I will. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind as I'm listening. And thanks for saying what's up. Oh, man, this is really annoying. Um, hmm. I don't know what to do. All right, let me see if if this, let's see what the issue is. So, um, uh, mm, mm. all right, let's just try to play one of my tracks. Screw it. Oh, man, it's my internet. Oh, what's up, Max? <laughs> yeah, 
you, thanks for tuning in from Berlin to my technical difficulty. Um, yeah, my my internet is just. I apparently I have the fastest internet in the known universe. So we're just dealing with that right now. All right, we're gonna do the nuclear mode where I uh, quit Safari and then reopen it. No, I don't think SoundCloud's down. I think Justin's internet is down. <laughs> uh, shit. All right, let's try this again. Oh, now you get to see all the secret back channels between me and Thomas making fun of all your music. Don't, don't, don't look now. Oh, man. Yeah, all right, we can start troubleshooting mode. First, let's see if we get volume from anything. Um, oh, wow. Okay, you know what? Maybe this is the issue. All right, I might have been trying to get too fancy. This is good. I think I might have figured it out. Um, all right, cool. We're in business. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Max is like, okay, this isn't interesting. I'm going to leave now. <laughs> all right, cool. We're, we're in business. I uh, tried to make... Oh, ah. All right, cool, 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 cool. So let me just pull up everyone's tracks and we're good to go. Thank you for being patient and sticking around. I appreciate that. I love that one of you is using Audius. We'll get into what that is if some of you don't know what that is. Vinny Conti in the cut. I love it, bro. Good to hear from you. And Jasco. You guys don't even know how sick that kid is. All right. Um, here we go. Spooks. Grinding. Buy Spooks. Grinding XP. Buy Spooks. And we're going. Sipping my delicious trop Topo Chico while listening to this very vibey, vibey beat. By the way, guys, if you see me writing anything on my phone, that's me writing notes, not not paying attention. That guitar is awesome.
Nice little melody you got going there in the background. Cool. Whoa, what the? Ah, okay. Um, all right, so before I get into it, I, I, I have been told that I'm not coming through on the stream, just coming through my speakers. <sighs> uh, let's try to figure that out. Um, All right, hold on. This is very frustrating. Sorry, guys. Uh, I don't know why it isn't coming through OBS. Let's see. Huh. All right, hold on a sec. This is really annoying. This has never been an issue before, as far as I'm aware. We've always had this working perfectly fine. Yeah, you're hearing my speakers through the microphone. That's what's happening. Um, uh, it should be going through the multi-output device. I have it going through my universal audio, which is routed to go into OBS. <sighs> Super fucking annoying. All right, sorry, guys. I'm going to have to have you look into the bowels here for a second. Um Let me see if I can get something. Mm, audio input capture. Let's see. Okay, let's see if this works. Not working. Oh, jeez. Okay. This is okay. So hold on. it's supposed to be capturing. Uh, 
I just don't get why my computer won't allow me to do the multi-output device, which is what would allow me to play things into OBS because I have it set up. Then SoundCloud won't play when I do that. Like the... No, it's not, it's not a SoundCloud thing. It's actually that the volume literally isn't coming into... Isn't coming into... God damn it. Tell me if you guys were hearing that. Yeah, the problem is, is that now I don't hear it. So we're not in business, but that's good to know. <laughs> um, No, the song is dope. The song is dope. Uh, I really want you guys to be able to hear it properly. <sighs> if I do window capture, will that allow me to actually... No... Okay, I have a, <laughs> all right, I have a hack. I mean, I could literally just listen to the track on my headphones while I send it through the stream, which would suck, but it could be done. That seems like it might be the only way to do it. Ooh. That actually might do it. Let's try that. Okay. Tell me if you guys hear this now. Yeah, guys, so the issue was is that you could hear it, but I couldn't hear it. So I want us to experience it together. So now tell me if you can hear it. No, it's still not working. God damn. I think we're going to have to I think we're going to have to have you guys listen along. 
se- separately. <sighs> well, I don't, I've never had this happen before. I feel like usually when I play stuff from on online, it works fine. All right, let me see something. All right, if if this doesn't work, then I'm going to have to uh I'm going to have to just listen along on my headphones. Um I don't know why it won't allow me to use my aggregate device. Alright, that's what we're gonna have to do. I wanna be able to actually still do this, so. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, now you, all right, here's what we're going to do. You guys can hear it, and I'm going to listen along in my headphones, so that way we can all do it together. Um, sorry, next time that we do this, we'll have this figured out perfectly.
All right, really dope, man. So, cool, cool, cool. So I have a lot of notes on this already. Yeah, that's what happened. Um, thanks for sticking with us, guys. Um, all right, so here's what I have to here's what I have for you, feedback wise. Um, so first of all, really good job. I love the vibe of the song. Um, I would say it is down tempo, chill, fun, and funky. All of those things that are uh, down there in the in the hashtags. So first off, I think you had said you wanted some feedback on mixing, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so let's see. What'd you say? Just looking to improve my mix and overall sound. Okay, cool. Yeah. So the musicality is there, man. It sounds good. Um, my first note is about the, the low end, the bass. So the thing is, is that since you, I'm just going to guess that you're producing in headphones. Um, and the reason for that is because the bass is out wide. And unfortunately, this is, this is something that I'm a little annoyed that I can't listen to through speakers. I, luckily, I listened to it through speakers the first time, so I heard it perfectly. Um, it's the type of thing that in, your, in my AirPods, on uh, other types of, uh, excuse me, and other types of headphones are going to sound fine because the bass is wide and in and headphones reward uh wide information but the thing is is that on my speaker system the low end was just completely not there man so my first thing that i'd recommend is just don't have the bass be wide put the bass down the middle I think that you should flip the imaging on this entire track. So I think all of your synths and chords and stuff like that, you should put out wide. And um, yeah, I figured as much. And then I think you should take all your bass information and put it in the middle. So that's my, my first piece of advice. Um, one thing that happens when you put bass out wide a lot of the times is it just it just goes out of phase. And so it just doesn't get picked up as heavy, you know? Now, there was this thing that I noticed at, um, at 145. There's this brief little moment where bass comes in. So where it goes, boom, 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 right here. Right? What you can hear is, is that that bass is very round and heavy and full and present and really in the image. So that's how all of your bass should sound. And in fact, again, I would just flip everything. That bass sound, I would put out wide and I'd put your main bass in the middle. So that's the first thing. Uh, the other thing is that your kick drum just literally has no low end in it. Um, I could turn it up as loud as I wanted and it would never hit me in the chest. So it sounds like you just took out way too much low information from your kick or you just had a shitty sample and you didn't add enough back to it. Um, so I like the texture of the kick. It has that very classic 707 type sound. But um, yeah, I would just say that um, you need to add much more low end to the kick. Like there just it just isn't there. Um, now, the other thing was that the the sub bass, like those super, super lows, sounds actually kind of good. So um, there's like some weight to it, but there's just this whole, and that's really on your bass. Your kick is still generating no, no sub frequencies, but your bass was really like hitting the super lows, which is fine but i think there's a bit of a misunderstanding these days about what bass is and where it's supposed to live bass is not what happens below 60 hertz bass is what happens from 60 hertz up to like 180 hertz or so so your track just has this gaping hole in the warmest part of the mix which is really that 100 150 area it just really could be inflated so just i want i want to be able to hear that warmth on it 
uh, especially because this is a really warm track, right? The idea itself is very kind of, it has a really nice, gentle feeling to it. Um, now, yeah, I just want to also say the chords are awesome. The guitar sounds great. Um, the last thing was that around here, Yeah, so in this section, the the lead instruments, like the um, the ambient instruments, are just not loud enough. Period. Um, they need to be louder. I would put them wider. I think that really, like my main main piece of of feedback here is just take your bass and put it in the middle and take the other things and put them out wide. It'll make the track seem way bigger. Make your kick have more oomph to it. Um, when you put your bass down the middle, you may find that all of that warmth comes back into the mix uh, because it may have just been throwing the 100, 150 material out of phase. I doubt it though. I have a feeling it's going to need a little bit of love and I would just make your kick stronger. So like, don't be afraid to have well, one, one thing that I think I was guilty of for a really long time that I also think a lot of people maybe fall prey to is that when you listen to, um, when you listen to professionally mastered and mixed music, it sounds like the low end is a little bit less powerful or, or than it maybe is because it's really tight. It's been controlled. But the thing is, is that on a frequency level, it's still really fat, you know? So like you want to uh, make sure that you're low. It's always better to err on the side of too much low end than not enough, especially because like in mastering, you know, I, I do a lot of mastering. Uh, it's always easier to remove low information if there's too much of it than to add it if there isn't any. It's really hard to synthesize stuff that isn't there. Um, yeah, so also... Just if you, if what you're hearing spooks from everything that I'm saying is, oh, I should mono out my sub bass. That's not what I'm saying. Mono the whole thing. Take the whole bass and put it in the middle, right? Don't mono out part of your side signal. It's just going to create more phase issues and it's going to sound really, really, really weird. There are ways to make bass wide and be present, but I think right now for where you're at, I don't mean this to be condescending or anything like that. I think your music will literally just sound better if you put the bass down the middle. What you always could do is instead of monoing out the sub bass with a plugin, you can just EQ, right? Your bass below 150, put a high low pass filter out your bass to 150 and put that in the middle. Take the rest of the signal and put it out wide. That will at least help a little bit if you still want the articulation on the bass to be wide. Okay, cool, man. I really appreciated you submitting that. Also, last thing I would say is that the uh, the lead that happens in this end part is a little out of key. Let me find the exact moment, but it gets a little bit dissonant with the chords. Yeah, so there's this note that happens at like 2.43. Now, if you want to keep that in stylistically, that's fine. To me, that sounds genuinely dissonant and not tastefully dissonant. Um, the difference, right, being that tasteful dissonance is when you purposely step out of key in order to add some kind of weird feeling. To me, that just sounded like a note that maybe wasn't correct. But if you want to keep it, that's, of course, very subjective. That's just my kind of feedback there. Okay, so thank you so much again, Spooks. Thanks for being the first person to go. And um, yeah, all right, cool. So let's move on. I know that Rashane is here in the mix. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and look at Rashane's track. And by the way, uh, eat your cereal, bachelor chow pow now. Um, if you're in the chat, let us know. Just say, I am eat your cereal. <laughs> All right, cool. So this is from Rashane. I'm going to go ahead and pull it up on my device so I can hear it too. And one, two, three. Nice. Really cool intro. 
real capital. I also love the. This is a copacetic production. They don't want someone like me already living in luxury And I still got more dreams I want to achieve I'm gonna strive for it, work at it, time making mine I'm gonna show you another blueprint, it's about time I'm coming for it, plan, work, repeat, don't retreat That's my strategy to be a better me So I stay centered and envision better days Cause in due time I'll acquire all that I desire I move with a purpose, yeah that's the mantra Move with a purpose, do what's right for you I'm on the come up, you just wait and see these are mogul moves in the making, manifest my destiny So sit back and like MG says, just let me be great Cause I believe in myself, I know I got what it takes I remember those cold days walking through the city Starting out in this tech world, trying to find my place Trying to figure out how to climb this ladder Got the same degree, but they don't wanna hear from me Give me opportunities, got better ideas, but they don't wanna use them So I just sit back and bide my time You want it done the wrong way, so I'll do it that way But don't gaslight me when you're to blame I won't take the bait So she says she's gonna talk to her white friends But it's all for show, nothing changes in my day to day You see her on IG, posting a story about Brianna and respecting everybody But can't do nothing for the people that she knows So I know what time she's really on, stay clear of her Can't do that fake shit, that's gonna fuck up my energy in this matrix I'm just trying to learn, grow and move on to the next But these motherfuckers make shit so complex Seems like they just love the drama Such prima donnas Who can't even say it with their chest Think that they're the best the and above all the rest Maybe when it's all said and done They'll realize we're all one But until then, I'll keep thriving It's just how we do Show them the way Step by step, build it up and show them the way So just get on my way Nice Very cool all right, so most of my, uh, did it stop playing? I think it was working. Um, all right, sick. Yeah, so that was like, that was dope. Um, my main piece of feedback there is just the vocal isn't sitting correctly. Like it's too dry. Um, there's not that much more that you'd have to do. Uh, I think that... Okay, yeah. So, like, the production in the background sounds really, really well glued. Um, and, yeah, to James Murley's point, instead of making the track louder, you could just turn your voice down and it'll make it seem like the track got louder. Um... I do think your vocal sticks out a little bit like it's not within the music. It's on top of the music. Right. And the thing that we want is for the, the, the vocal to feel like it's a part of that world. Um, and so, yeah, one thing I would say is turn the vocal down a little bit. Not too much because it's hip hop. We want to hear what you're saying really clearly. Also, I think you could have more top end on the vocal for sure. Um Okay, here. So actually, as I'm listening back now, what it really is, is there's just too much. There's, there's a little bit too much lows in your voice. So I actually think you could do more compression on your vocal. Because um, that's going to eat up the low frequencies a little bit. And I would just boost a little bit more on the high end. Like... I think you could do a little shelf maybe at like 8K and just lift everything up, the presence. Not even a notch, just a shelf. Just lift everything. And then maybe do a little bit of a bell boost at like 16K or something um, or 15, you know. Uh, and then, yeah, I would just maybe do some multiband compression um, on the lows and low mids. Very fast attack, very long release. And just really try to iron that shit in. I don't actually think the vocal is too loud. I just think that it feels too loud because um, the low part of your vocal is just is detract is distracting the listener and the ear from um, actually being able to perceive and focus on the low end more. Okay, so.
Yeah, okay. So the other thing with getting your vocals to sit in the song is like uh they just sounded so dry. Um so like one thing that would work would be a very quick or rather to say a very short decay room reverb that's stereo. Um like literally like a 20 like 200 to 300 millisecond um decay time and have the pre-delay be basically zero so it just feels like it's a little bit out there uh and just send your vocal to that a little bit don't send it so much that we hear the room you want to feel the room what it will do is it will add warmth and dimension to the vocal which the production has in spades right by the way that's like really awesome i don't know if you produce that whole thing yourself but it really sounds good so um I do also agree that I just like think on a on a um on a creative level there are certain moments where like your flow jumped out of the groove, you know? So I think there I would just also just try to continue to work on syncopation, you know, making sure that your vocal rhythmically syncopates in and out of the holes and pockets in the beat. Um but yeah, I mean the the production is great and the idea is there. I think one thing that also could be fun would be to play with the vocal a little bit more in terms of like do some delay throws um, to like accentuate certain words, you know, um, maybe some little like ad libs and stuff like that. Um, but the vibe is on point. I really dig it. I also think that the kick drum could be a little bit boomier. There could just be maybe just give it a little bit of a notch at like 50 hertz. Just really boost that. Just make it cut through, you know, um, on that low end. But yeah, it sounds great. The the um, the piano was fantastic. All right, cool. Thank you so much, Rishane. I hope that my uh, my feedback was helpful. So let's go ahead and move on. I still haven't heard from the serial guy. So we're just gonna move on. We're gonna go over to bedroom bat by bishop 91 is this from drunk bishop i'm assuming let me double check yes it is okay so very sick that you're using audius i love that uh for those of you that don't know audius is a blockchain um is a blockchain uh music platform so that's pretty cool um all right let's see Here we go. So I'm pulling this up right now and we will press play. Heavy, right off the bat, heavy slaps.
think another one of your tracks just came on. Sorry about that. So that was cool, man. Um, boom, five reposts already. That's awesome, man. Um, all right. So there really is just like the, the first half of the song, I, I genuinely didn't really hear anything like uh, that was that was like off or struck me, so to speak. Um Yeah, one thing I would maybe do explore doing is to use parallel compression on the kick drum um, to just make a really, really snappy parallel compression return. Like really, so there's no low end in it. It's just, you know, just the, the transient of the kick and then just blend that back in. Um, it feels a little smushy to me, but if that's the style you're going for, I also get that. Yeah, so the real issue for me started happening when at around yeah. Yeah. So first thing is that this is sort of like weird transient. I'm not sure what instrument it's coming from. It's like a chord stab or something, but it's cutting all the way to the front. And it's like, um, it's like too sharp. It's too much at the front. It jumps past the drums and it like does it in such a way that's really distracting and kind of jarring. Um, now, yeah, so parallel compression is, is really important. So, um, parallel compression, right, is when you take just your kick drum or, or anything but let's say for now, this is what you want to do. Just take your, your kick drum and send it to a return track if you're using Ableton or, or send it to a bus if you're using Logic. And uh, what you want to do is apply compression with a very slow attack. Uh, so, you know, like 70, 80 milliseconds and a fast release and a really high ratio. So 10 or above. And what you want to do is you want to achieve at least 10 decibels of gain reduction on the compressor. So you want to make it sound literally like unmusical. You want to make it sound really thin and sharp. Uh, and what you're going to do is, is that it should make, get really, like it really should accentuate the punch, the transient, the snap. And what you do is, is then you blend that back in with the original kick drum and it adds the transient to it a little bit more. So it just accentuates the snap. Um, so the other thing, the major thing also is that aside from that weird transient that was occurring on like the chord stab or something, I couldn't really suss it out because there's a lot that suddenly came in. The other thing that's happening is that that bending bass sound that you bring in is cool. But the problem is, is that the way your chords are voiced is that the, the low voicing, the low, the bass note on each of the chord and the bass note is just the bottom note, right? It doesn't have to be a note that is in the bass range. It's just the bottom note is clashing harmonically with the, um, the bass, not, not EQ wise sounds fine in terms of EQ, but actually on a musical level, uh, they are not in sync. So there, the thing is, is that those new bass notes that you're bringing in are creating basically slash chords. So those chords that you're playing on top, it's changing the feeling of them and it's making it sound a little bit off and weird. So I would just try to, you know, think about the relationship between the bass and the chords in that respect there. Uh, so the thing is also is that like, you have to remember if you're playing chords and you start playing a really active melodic bass line under the, under the chords, you're actively changing the chord, per the perception of what that chord is and the color of that chord every time you change the bass note, right? Because the bass note is what actually dictates the primary feeling of the chord. That's the bass layer harmonic that all the other harmonics are harmonizing with. Um, so I might even just take out the chords at that part right over here when the bass comes in. 
other than that, man, I think it sounds good. I think your sound design is pretty solid. Um, and yeah, good work. You know, my, my, my really, my main comment is just that weird transient sound and then the clashing between the bass and the, uh, the chords. Good stuff. Uh, all right, let's continue moving along. Shoegaze Sunday by a Weaslow, I believe. Oh, by James Murley. Okay, I've been noticing you floating around the chat, man. Hitting us with that Bandcamp link. All right, I see you. I see you. Let's get in there. That's my first comment. Is this is loud as fuck? Wow, what did you record this field recording with? That sounds very good. Right, so let's see. Okay, so were we not able to hear anything that I was saying the whole time? That's okay. 
the track was good. All right, so I, I really only had a couple comments. First of all, the mastering sounds exceptional. Um, I don't know if you mastered it yourself, um, or if uh, if um, or if you had someone else master it. But that sounds really good. Um, it's really immersive. It's really wide. So I see you said I decided to change the game and combine my old guitar playing with Yeezus Sunday service. So does that mean you like took, um, you like took a recording from Sunday service or a beat and like just played on top of it? I want to, I'm, I'm curious. I want to know. Um, so just let me know. I think we're a bit delayed here. Um, yeah, anyway, so just James, just let me know. I'm, I'm self mastered. Fantastic, dude. Really good job. Um, it sounds incredibly open, incredibly transparent, incredibly immersive. So great work. Um, couple things. The guitars were, were, were a little harsh, not harsh in like a holy shit kind of way. Harsh just in a like, the rest of the master sounded really smooth and uh just like the stuff at like from 2k to three and a half k was a little oh okay 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 by the drummer yeah because i was gonna say the drumming was fucking sick that was one thing that i mentioned i was like wow whoever's playing the drums the recording is amazing and it sounds really good the feel so all right that makes sense um but still that's awesome man that that you uh that you use that in that way. Um, the, the distortion that you used on the guitar. Now I have suspicions. I personally, I'm always using analog distortion on my guitars. And by that, I mean, I'm like just distorting preamps. And it sounds like you were kind of trying to emulate that, that gritty sound you get from, um, you know, from what you might call, um, overdriving a preamp. But um, I think that it's to me, it sounded like it was a um, a digital emulation of that process. It sounded a little bit harsh. Um, and so that's fine. Like it, the, the getting the realistic distortion thing is less important than just controlling it. So like, I just would, I just would have reduced, um, yeah, a couple of some of the high mid information is a bit harsh and then probably just like put on a low pass filter at like 14,000 or something for the guitars. Um, helix. Okay. Uh, is that the distortion you were using helix? And then, yeah, my other comment, which is uh, pretty simple, was just like the snare that comes in out wide in the intro or not in the intro, but like towards the beginning is way too um, quiet. Like all the drums should be louder. The hi-hats were mixed perfect. Those are fine. But the knocking drums needed to be louder. Uh, the low end sounded great also. Um, the, the kick and the low end were really in there. But that snare... Um, yeah, so the thing is with like Decapitator, man, I'm sorry, that plugin is bullshit. Like it just doesn't sound good in my opinion. Um, there's, there are other plugins that sound way more realistic. I think that plugin sounds harsh every day of the week whenever you start driving it. Um, so like, yeah, just like that plugin creates harshness in the high mids and the highs in a way that is, oh no, it's called uh, Helios, not Helix. Um, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. Uh, so yeah, I mean, for getting that, getting that proper overdrive sound, um, without having to spend too much money is hard. Uh, because I always use, if I'm doing it digitally, I'm always going to use, the uh the helios channel emulation from universal audio or the thermionic culture vulture from universal audio 
Um, those are the two ones that I recommend. You could also try the saturator from soft tube. The soft tube is going to give you a much smoother response. Um, yeah, like, like the way that, that, that you get that classic guitar distortion, that, that's that, that crispy snappy grit is actually to, um, overdrive a unit not to use a distortion unit is to overdrive a unit that can create distortion by hitting it too hard. So you can do that with any of the preamps in the universal audio ecosystem. You can do it with some of the slate digital stuff, but like, um, but that stuff can be harsh. It's a little bit less reliable, but yeah, I think if you try soft tube, that could get you where you want to go. Um, their saturator. Yeah, I would say really good stuff though, man. I would, I wouldn't say need to get a UA card. I would, I would hold off on needing to get a UA card, like explore other options first. Um, the other thing to do would just be like, you know, when you're using the decapitator is just roll it towards dark mode when you are just, just distorting it a lot so that it actually rolls off some of the highs for you. Um, also, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I said this yet, but like the music was really nice. I enjoyed the music a lot, dude. It was immersive. It was like thought provoking, you know, like in a good way. Like it just made me feel things, made me reflective. I dug it, dude. The guitar work is really nice. So like great work all around. And again, the master sounds good. It was preposterously loud. Like, I think a bit, a bit, you could like even relax that a little bit. Um, but yeah, man, great work. Keep doing what you're doing. So next we got Vinny Conti in the cut. You haven't said a single thing the whole time in the chat. I'm pretty sure. So you got to let me know that you're here, bro. Cause I want to listen to your track and you know, I love you. But if you're not here, I can't listen to it. And same thing with Jasco. Uh, let me know. Um, let me know. I'm, I'm glad that you're impressed by my feedback. I'm impressed by your music, dude. It sounds good. All right, so Oh, Vinny's here. All right. Vinny's here. He's just been quietly biding his time waiting to conquer. All right, take it easy, James. Thanks so much for stopping in and great work, man. Keep keep making tunes. You're definitely onto something. All right, Vinny Conti. What Vinny, you got so many followers, dude. What's this all about? I love it. <laughs> Sick. All right. Um Let me find Vinny's track. And here we go. In this world Artwork is awesome, bro. Of ordinary people in this world, I'm glad there's you in this world. Of ordinary people in this world, I'm glad there's you. So, like, my first comment and observation world, is just like, your vocal is panned to the left, which is cool. Which in is cool. I take that. But uh, I would have some sort of delay on the right. So that the mix is more alive. Right? So I'm glad there's right. you. Okay, then. But we need to let go. When it comes to world middle. of ordinary people. So those vocals that come in right there. I'm glad there's you. But that are we little need to let go. Loud and the low frequencies are like dominating over the rest of it. La, 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 la. La, take us home. No 
everything must go, our gift to you. Going out of biz, going out of biz, going out of biz, everything love, must go. Love, 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 love won't take us home. I love what you just did right there. Love won't take us home. How you made the, the vocals come wide for that part. That feels great, man. That really opens up. That's proper production. In this world. So I have a feeling that you probably do already, but if for some reason you don't, just go listen to like LCD sound system a lot. I think that should be your like your mix reference should just be LCD sound system because the way you're singing and delivering and the type of production to me is just very LCD, very James Murphy. Yeah, I think your vocal is too dry, honestly. Like, like, bro, look at your fucking artwork. Like, come on, this needs to be trippier. Your vocal, right there. Yeah. Okay. What happens at 2:43? That is what your vocal should sound like the whole time. No must, no fuss, no spill. Everything must go. Our gift to you. Going out of biz, going out of biz, going out of biz. Everything love, must go. Love, love, love. Yeah, dude, also just get get rid of the low mids in your vocal more on those wide ones. It just sounds, it, 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 it like sounds bulky, you know? I love that little lead, by the way. That whole thing is awesome. Bro, this is great. This is really, really good. I think this is almost there. Um, I I also think, like, I just I just want more attitude from your vocal, dude. That's all. Like... In terms of this, the the processing, so you know, I would get more of a talk box vibe going. Uh, I would filter it more. I would take out the lows. Yeah, dude, just like go and listen to James Murphy. You know, I agree with James Murley as well. Do some, you know, delay throws, reverb throws. I like that spooked out delay that you did over here. I would add that in more. I would just um. Yeah, it sounds it sounds good, dude. Um, I just I do I do think that the vocal levels are a little bit off at certain moments in time, like especially when stuff comes wide. Um, I would just scoop out the low mids. I think the vocal could be more compressed, like in a stylistic way. Like you could purposely kind of over compress it and make it really pinched and thin sounding, and have a phaser on it or a flanger or something like, like yeah. I think this is really cool. Um, I also think that like you should access some sort of like you should set up a mono reverb with a really long pre delay and a long decay, and a stereo reverb with a really long pre delay and a long decay. And I think you should alternate at times between throwing it into that that deep space because right now everything's sitting right in front of us and on top of us, which is cool. I like that like interface kind of tight to the floor sound. But I do think that like again because of the artwork and because of the whole vibe you're going for with this, I think, which is like kind of, you know, like kitschy psychedelic is like manipulate space. There's so much space to be used because you're not using it, you know? So like, yeah, it's dope, man. Good stuff. Mainly. Yeah. And, and the production sounds good. The only thing that was a little weird is I feel like the bass would sometimes hit a note that was so low that it was actually like below it's, it's, it's like harmonic articulation. And it would just become mud. I was still enjoying it, but like that might be something to look at. Maybe raise that note an octave or something. Um, yeah. Anyway, dude, it's dope. I don't necessarily say that bigger drums are a must on this. I I think that like I like how tiny it feels. Like how how like tight.
Yeah, I really like how subtle the whole thing is, dude. And then, yeah, dude, my, like, just a, a really, I, one thing that I cannot stress enough is um, take that vocal that's on the left and send it to a mono delay that's on the right. And have it be weird. Have it be swirling and doing nonsense shit. It'll just sound, it'll make it, the whole thing bounce. Like, add that. Make the vocal be the thing that makes the track have tons of dynamics because the production doesn't, which is fine. I like that the production isn't very dynamic. Like, I like that it's really tight and chill. That's like, that's the type of shit where I could sit in my living room and like smoke a joint or I could be at a bar and kind of grooving to it or I could be at a festival and be like, yeah, you know? So like, make the vocal the thing that really is the story. Great work, Vinny. For real, dude. This has like come such a long way since the last time you like showed me some music. All right, so Jasko, I've seen you in the chat, bro. I know you're there. Um, so it's time for all of you to sit back and feel terrible about your terrible about yourselves because Jasko is 16 and he is a nasty producer. He just I just had him in a class at the school. So let's go ahead and see what you got, dude. Wow, dude, is this a joke? Your your track length is three minutes and forty three seconds long for the three four three feedback review. What a clown! I love it. Sounds like an argument between the inside information on the limit. 
Unreal, man. For real, that was fire. Yeah, and again, for anyone that didn't hear the first time, that Jake is 16. <laughs> big, big things ahead for you, man. Really. Um, yeah. Yeah, so really my only comment there, dude, is just like that, that comment about the the mastering so i don't i don't know specifically what's going on but it does sound like it's being slightly over limited to the point that it's actually creating a little bit of distortion and also that whatever compression you're using the release time is too long so i would just i i, I would yeah i would just make it so that it really re just jumps off very quickly you know even on the limiter too like i would make if i'm if i'm mastering that and i'm using fab filter or whatever limiter it is you're using i don't know what limiter you're using you know, I'm going to have the release time be very fast, like very fast, like faster than 100 milliseconds, right? Which is fast for a limiter. So to really like jump off, just let it jump off those transients, right? Because the kick is so loud that that's what's causing the track to limit. So you want the rest of the track to not get eaten by the limiter, right? You want the rest of the track to breathe. And so that'll actually, if you make the release time really fast in the limiter, what's going to end up happening is the track's actually going to pump more. It'll be really, really nice. Um, yeah, no, dude, it sounds, it sounds awesome. And, um, I think you have my email. Send me that track. I want to show that to some people. Um, yeah, that sounds incredible, dude. Good work. Um, all right. Well, bachelor chow pal. Wow. Never showed up. So, so I just want to know what it sounds like. Um, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to listen to it, but I'm just not going to give it any feedback. <laughs> Unless it's like the sickest track ever. I just want to know. I'm too curious. There are too many things going on with this track, visually speaking, and in terms of the name, that I just want to know what is happening here. showed up because I really want to know uh, who is playing this upper yeah. bass. gonna listen to the rest of it but uh that was cool and i wish they had been here because i had a lot of weird things to say uh anyway so in spite of the fact that we had tremendous tremendous technical difficulties i actually think that was a pretty successful round one of uh feedback so um i would highly encourage any of you who you know have been making music in any capacity to just submit your track um you know even if you only want to submit like half of the track that sounds done that's also fine you know but there's nothing better than being able to get feedback not only from me but from other people you know i mean i think a lot of you probably didn't realize or didn't know how much other people were going to enjoy your music um and all around i would say like i dug on a musical level, everything that was submitted. So thank you guys so much for sharing your art with me and with everyone else. 
And um, next time we do this, I'm going to have my whole system set up properly so I can crank it on my speakers and get super lost in the vibe and you can hear it <laughs> on your end as well. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so, so much for being a part of this. Um, like I said, we're going to be doing this in two weeks. So not next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after, which will be the 18th. Um, and I really, really hope to, uh, hear tracks from, from you guys, uh, who didn't submit any and thanks so much for you know participating and um i hope that you found my feedback helpful and that you can implement it in your music uh immediately so to speak to you know to improve it for yourself and uh, i would highly encourage everyone here who who is making music to keep doing it and to not be afraid to put stuff out and to not worry about being perfect Right. I still have songs that I've put out uh, even within the last year and a half or so where I'll be like, damn, I wish this had been better. or That had been better. Right. At the end of the day, it's just about, you know, making the music sound as good as you can and making the music sound. Um, making the music communicate the emotion of it. Right. And and overall, I think that each of you made something highly emotional and personal sounding, which is super cool. So. Please, please hit the subscribe button on the channel if you haven't. We have tons of really cool content that's going to be coming up. And like I said, we're going to be restarting our weekly educational streaming um, in September. So stay tuned to that. And it was lovely to talk and see some of you all. And uh, peace.
went. All right, I got it. Wrong.